Oh, well, hello there. As you can see, I'm just getting the uh, offhand Disney set into the, uh, the Christmas spirit right now. And now that I have the set all set up, let's talk about the history of the holidays and Christmas at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. And Christmas is a very important part of the parks, as you can tell if you visit during the holiday season. And what better place to start than the original Disneyland? Walt Disney as a boy loved celebrating the holidays, and if you remember one of my earlier videos, I talk about how he received a drawing pad one year for Christmas, and how that gift would lead to the founding of the Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio and Disney as we know it today. And although Christmas is big business now at Disneyland, back in 1955 when the park first opened, you'd be hard pressed to find any decorations anywhere. You'd find a Christmas tree in the hub where the partner statue stands today, and wreaths and garlands festooning the entrances to lands and different structures around the park. But the holidays did feature something called the Christmas Bowl, somewhat of a precursor to what we know today as the Candlelight Processional. Over time, though, more and more Christmas decorations and celebrations were held all over Disneyland, and it shortly became the best time to visit the park. From a very, very tall Christmas tree sitting in the middle of Town Square on Main Street, USA, to the very popular Christmas parades, starting in 2007, Sleeping Beauty Castle would also get a makeover for the holidays with snow topping each of its spires. In the 60s, we saw what could be an early precursor to holiday overlays for rides, a giant star on top of the Matterhorn bobsleds. In 1997, Disney opened what was, in reality, one of the first holiday overlays they'd ever done. It's a small world holiday. Now this ride is a more festive reimagining of Walt Disney's original It's a Small World, celebrating not only children from all around the world, but also the holidays that they celebrated in their respective countries. And all the while, the children would sing a mashup between various Christmas songs and It's a Small World, and I really think this is more catchy than the original Small World tune, if I'm honest. Now who knows, maybe I just like Christmas music too much. And recently they've begun projecting a show on the outside of It's a Small World in a really helpful helps tie the theming together. After the success of It's a Small World holiday, Disney decided that their next holiday overlay should have a bigger budget and be one that the Imagineers could really have fun with. And it should take the place of a beloved Disney attraction for a quarter of the year, but I've already made a video on that. Originally, Imagineers wanted to tell the story of Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol, but they ultimately decided a storyline taking place in jolly old England wouldn't really fit very well in New Orleans Square. So instead, they turned to another classic Christmas tale, A Visit from St. Nicholas, also known as The Night Before Christmas, and with the popularity of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, the overlay was inevitable. Now we all know I've talked at length about the Haunted Mansion and its various overlays and secrets and details, so I'm not going to spend too long on The Nightmare Before Christmas overlay. Haunted Mansion Holiday remains to this day one of Disney's most intricate holiday overlays ever created. From brand new animatronics of original characters from The Nightmare Before Christmas added to the graveyard scene, to a Santa hat added to the Hatbox Ghost's hat collection. Look at it, it's so cute. But before we leave Disneyland and start talking about the other parks, there is one more overlay I want to talk about that you may have forgotten. Either that, or it's embedded in your brain forever, and you will never forget the Country Bear Christmas Special. The Country Bear Theater was all decked out with their Christmas lights, and all the bears were ready to perform their holiday tunes for you, with some being famous Christmas songs you start hearing on the radio in October, and other others being a bit more obscure. From Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Blue Christmas to some other songs like Hungry as a Bear and Another New Year by who else but Big Al himself. Now remember when I said It's a Small World Holiday was one of the first holiday overlays Disney had ever done besides maybe the Matterhorn? This is the first official one they had ever done. The Country Bear Christmas Special began operation in the winter of 1984, so it's a bit earlier to the party than the rest of the overlays. And Unfortunately, it ceased operations just around the time where holiday overlays were starting to pick up steam with Haunted Mansion and Small World. The Christmas special would cease in 2000 because the following year in 2001, the Country Bear Jamboree went away forever at Disneyland. And the overlay was shelved in Florida at Walt Disney World in 2005 because of alleged problems with the copyright of the songs that are being performed. Like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Blue Christmas, but there are rumors circulating that the overlay will return in some form to the Magic Kingdom someday soon. But remember that rumors are just rumors and the Country Bear Christmas special may never return. 
but I do love myself a good holiday overlay. But now let's board Santa's sleigh and journey from Anaheim, California to Orlando, Florida in just under eight seconds. Because Walt Disney World, and more specifically in this video, the Magic Kingdom has its own fair share of holiday history. Because the Walt Disney World Resort opened in 1971 in October, they only had two months to start planning for Christmas, but they pulled it off. That year, you could spot a giant Christmas tree in the Grand Canyon concourse of the Contemporary Hotel. And because it was Walt Disney World's first Christmas, on December 12th, the Orlando Sentinel kept everybody's expectations in check when it announced that Walt Disney World's first Christmas will be a spirited two-week holiday full of gaiety, tradition, colorful Disney character parades, and commemorative religious pageantry of the season. But I think Disney followed through because the very first year the candlelight processional was offered at the Magic Kingdom at the train station, the same place they had it at Disneyland after the Christmas Bowl was removed. And the first year of Christmas at the Walt Disney World Resort seemed to be a success. Starting in the 2013 holiday season, Disney introduced a brand new overlay never seen before at both Disneyland and Walt Disney World called the Jingle Cruise. This overlay saw the queue being redecorated with more festive elements. The skippers were given new Christmas-themed puns to tell the guests, hopefully to their delight hopefully, and various sets in the ride were upgraded with tinsel and Santa hats and everything you would find in a cheap Christmas department store, but it kind of fits with the ride. And it was one of Disneyland's most beloved holiday overlays that was until for some reason they took it away forever in 2017, and now, two years later, there's still no sign of the Jingle Cruise anywhere. If you've managed to spot it, please report it. It's very important that we find this overlay and have it returned home safely. Now we've talked about Disneyland and their famous Haunted Mansion holiday, but did you know that there was originally a plan to bring the holiday overlay to the Magic Kingdom at some point? Settle in everyone, for I am about to tell you a tale that's been passed from cast member to cast member, guest to guest over the years. Due to the success of Disneyland's Haunted Mansion a holiday in 2001, the following year, Walt Disney Imagineering wanted to bring Tim Burton's classic characters to the Magic Kingdom the following year. And the idea was very close to coming to fruition. They had all the props and all the signage ready for the transformation of the mansion. At the last moment though, the Imagineers pulled back and said to themselves, Maybe some people will want to experience the original Haunted Mansion, since Walt Disney World is more of a once-in-a-lifetime destination vacation. Some guests may not like that they aren't able to ride Walt Disney's classic Haunted Mansion, and so the Haunted Mansion holiday for the Magic Kingdom in Orlando was cancelled. But remember, Imagineering had already put together all of the animatronics and props for Florida's Haunted Mansion holiday, and they couldn't just throw it all in the trash can. Could they? No. Instead, they decided to move it to Tokyo Disneyland, to their haunted mansion, considering the two mansions were more or less identical at the time. So they moved all of the ride elements intended for Florida to Tokyo. And so Haunted Mansion Holiday opened in September of 2004, and it was a resounding success. And the Christmas tradition, just like at Disneyland, has continued every year, starting in September and ending in January since that fateful day in 2004. Again, it's just a legend passed in whisper between Disney fans, but I think it's a pretty fun one. And now I'm 99% sure I have covered every single topic relating to the Haunted Mansion I could ever cover. So moving on. And Walt Disney World up until very recently was really bare on the holiday overlays because it was a once in a lifetime vacation destination and they needed a more consistent experience for guests who would only visit one or two times in their life. But this year they pulled out all the stops with a holiday overlay overlay for the Tomorrowland Speedway, the Magic Kingdom's version of Autopia, and during the Christmas party they deck out Space Mountain and Tomorrowland with rock and roll Christmas music in an overlay I like to call Holly Jolly Space Mountain because it doesn't really have a name. And over at Epcot, they've added a few seasonal touches to living with the land. Namely, just some Christmas lights and Christmas theming and this beautiful family of sand men. But I do really appreciate them adding these small holiday touches to rides that don't really change the complete theming of the ride like Haunted Mansion Holiday, but just add a little something extra for the Christmas season. And that, everyone, brings us all the way up to today, where the Christmas season is a very, very busy time for the Disney parks, but also a wonderful 
wonderful time to visit because of all the theming and the atmosphere. And now I turn the question to you. What is your favorite time of the year to visit Disneyland or Disney World? Is it during the spring or summertime when you can visit the park and not have to worry about seasonal decorations? Or perhaps it's during the Halloween season when you can enjoy a side of spooky ambiance alongside the usual Disney magic. Whatever your preferred time of year to visit the Disney resorts is, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Oh hey there! Well, you caught me in the middle of taking off the holiday overlay from my classic Disney set here. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because the holidays are very special around here and I love celebrating them with you guys. So, from my family to yours, everyone, have a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye. This is probably a fire hazard, huh?